Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Splatty Cast. <laughs> I've gotten to deal with me again. How you doing, bud? Woo! Week three. <laughs> Week three. No James again, because James is uh, traveling, but uh, we wish him well. Um, it, uh, he's the only team in the league who's got more points scored against him than myself, so I feel your pain, James. We'll we'll figure it out eventually. Um, I also have the lowest total points scored, so... I'm not going to blame my opponents on the reason why my team sucks, but how you been to be able to you know, uh, I guess, you know, we just go back a year. We're back to the Niners pretty much being last year's Niners, right? Like nothing has really changed that much. Uh, fantasy football continuously just been a trip. It's good. <laughs> and you're muted. <laughs> unless you're uh, coughing oh yeah no, oh, he's alive <laughs> the cough. we're good um yeah no i mean here's the here's the thing fantasy football is back football is back we're in a week three it absolutely sucks that that trey lance went down um but this is why we paid jimmy to be here so yeah the, season, the season's not over we're like two years ago when jimmy went down what was that like week two or week three like in the season right like, like it was awful right so at least now we have a backup. I mean, now if Jimmy goes down again, knock on wood, that doesn't happen. Like, you know, you can never bank on, you can never bet on losing two quarterbacks. But hey, we we had a safety valve in there. So and, and 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 our safety valve was quite literally last year's baseline, right? Right now, you has another year of like actual dedication and is looking good. We have Debo Samuel still, you know. We're continuously having our running back woes, but it, you know we have game plans that essentially anyone you can just plug and go. And um, it's one of those that, yeah, I think in a rare case, I'm not fearful for our season. Mm-hmm. And dare I say it, I actually kind of feel a little bit more comfortable because, again, at least I know, like, Yes, I'm gonna say it. like he is capable. He's Jimmy capable, you know. Like he's he's gonna be able to do enough to manage a game. He just won't have the potential like highlight reel of a quarterback who can run and throw the ball super deep. Instead, it's gonna just be like consistent defensive play as well as, um, you know, just like a manageable defense or offense. Yeah. yeah. Well, and hey, and 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 this is something that's gonna be, um, it's like it's almost unfair. It is unfair to try to compare to what like Trey was able to do in like in less than five quarters. But George Kittle's back. That's gonna be right. absolutely huge. Um, if he can stay healthy, which is always a big if, like that's amazing for Jimmy's ability to distribute the ball because Kittle's been his number one target the entire time he's been here in San Francisco. Like, it's just Absolutely. so much better. The run game is so much better with, like, essentially a sixth offensive lineman out there on the edge. Um, yeah, like, uh, you know, it can't be understated how much better the 49ers should look on offense because of Kittle. Not, not like, forget about the quarterback situation. But yeah, that's- absolutely. Um, and yeah, and and then I think on defense, you know, like the, that defense is really coming into its own at this point. You know, gave up no points against Seattle, um, right? So, so it's it's uh, Denver should be a better offense, but also they just played Seattle in Week One, and 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 you know we all know how that went. So should be interesting. I'm I'm excited to see um, what Jimmy can do under the lights. I think obviously, uh, you know, NBC is not pumped that trey lance isn't available for this game but the fact that they get to spin this now is jimmy versus russ and a new like like you know like the storylines set themselves up for this to be um a super exciting game tomorrow night and i'm looking forward to it like there's there's a lot of like prove it right so like okay jimmy like this is your time you're coming in prove why that we should have never made the move to trey lance or just like prove why you should be a starting quarterback in the league for next year where Russ is coming in. It's like, Hey, can you just like prove that you're actually a good quarterback? And, and I still say that I do think he is a good quarterback. There's been a lot of questionable, like offensive play uh, or just game planning. And and also it's really hard when, okay. So yeah, he has his number one receiver, but he's then missing, you know, uh, uh, KJ Hamler has been out for a while and then they lost um 
Uh, what's that? He's the other wide receiver that went down in like preseason. I totally oh, blanking on who it um, is. But you. like you lost like three really good weapons for Russ if they could run like a three wide receiver sets and shouldn't be an excuse if you're capable of the ball, you should be able to deliver the ball. Just uh, we'll see. I think this yeah. is a good gonna be a good prove it game regardless, because I think there's so much hype around both teams that I think- yeah, I think you're you're calling it a prove it game is like right on the money. Um, both teams, I think, would have expected to be two and zero coming into the night, and like this game have a lot like a, this be a prove it game is like okay, who's gonna like take take hold of their division or who's gonna take hold of their conference? And now instead, it's like one team's gonna walk away with a one and two rec- like a terrible start, like compared to their expectations. Like, and one team, yeah, like okay, two and one, like. You know, even when we were looking at, at breaking down the schedule, like if we got to week three at two and one, I would have felt fine, but also kind of expected that the loss would have been against Denver. And now that's that's not possible. So I think you're yeah. right. It is, it's a it's both teams have a lot to prove. Um, this may be the closest thing that we'll see that we've seen so far, like in the season to like a, a playoff atmosphere, like just based on the, the two quality teams that are out there. I mean, I'm sure. I'm sure I'm missing something like as far as uh, I'm, sh- I'm sure there's been another game and I'm, I'm just, I'm blanking on that's had that like playoff feel, but this, this has the potential to be, uh, be right up there as like, Oh, this game looked like playoff football. Um, so yeah, super excited. Yeah. Cause I mean, I mean, like, yeah, I'm going to say like, you could even say like the dolphins and, and the Ravens, right. Two sure. That game, that game probably. That yeah. were, and then like, while it was supposed to be a lot better of a playoff game, the Rams and Buffalo was were supposed to be another game that was like, hey, we could be potentially watching the Super Bowl ahead of the Super Bowl, right? Um, but no, you're right. I think these are two highly anticipated teams that had a lot of buzz coming into the season. And yeah, so I'm excited. Uh, we, could, we could get into it more after Monday uh, for sure because – if we lose on a goddamn pick <laughs> or something at the end of the game, like a bonehead Jimmy throw, you know I'm coming in hot. So. I don't know why you're thinking so negative. Jimmy's gonna ride. We're gonna ride <laughs> off in the sunset. Um. I hope so. I'm here. <laughs> I'm being optimistic, but I'm just warning you. You better have your fire resistant suit because I'm gonna come in so hot. I'm gonna torch this mic. <laughs> Jimmy, but. Jimmy, uh, can never do can never do anything to to win your approval. I know that. So let's uh, let's stop talking Niners. Let's go let's go into fantasy football a bit. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna give you the floor because it sounded like you had a lot to say about your own team. How how you feeling, Nabil? Well, okay. So like, look, I'm notorious for like maybe putting a little extra baggage on on, on Travis, and honestly. I thought maybe his week one was a little bit of a fluke, but for two weeks in a row, he's put up just an immense amount of not like what is he scored like one, one fifty or one. Yeah. He's putting up huge scores. So one thirty five and one seventy. like, look, we talked about it last week too. At least my team didn't come and perform, right? It was my 90 week. I think where I'm getting a little annoyed is like, three of my pick top three picks regardless of keepers we could call it like shut the bed or just like did not can't perform because they're either injured right like kamara's ribs injury God. just known mike evans was gonna just completely i'm gonna say it, fuck with like marshawn and get suspended cool thanks my second pick overall, right? And then, like, Eliza Mitchell, we, IR, we know that. Already my top three picks are just, like, pretty much useless to me this week. You you can see that uh, I'm very scared for my depth in running back as I am now trying to hold as many goddamn running backs as I can. Uh, so much so that I'm like, who needs a kicker? I'll figure it out later. But um, it, it, it look, I, I'll be honest. There's enough kickers later in the afternoon and Sunday and Monday that, look, if someone really wants to go through and add and drop people, which I actually think is fixed, 
like if you add and drop them, they don't immediately jump to white waiver. Right. I, I just don't think you can pick them up. Also but um, yeah, you are. Yeah. yeah, you are. Yeah. The way Yahoo works is that if you add somebody like in and drop them, it either it's either same day or even just like within the same like waiver period, um, they do not go back to waivers and you are locked out from re-adding them. Um, yeah. Essentially, yes. Like juggle multiple players on your lineup. Um, yeah. Which like is fine by me, like more or less what I'm getting to my point and like, we say this every year, but I, I think I have it. I, I'm going to change how the, my, my thought is on this, but like, God, is this the most like injuries so far at the beginning of the season? It just feels that way for me because so much of my team has been either injured or suspended at this point. Um, but I think a lot of it comes down to, and I'm wondering if you feel this is the questionable tag is being thrown so much more on players now. Like yeah. if you looked on Wednesday, Wednesday is now like a, a rest day around the league, especially for your veteran players that like the questionable designation is just on so many different players. Uh, what was it? Was it probable was like the old one a few years ago that was like, okay, like I'd almost rather have that more in depth designation because, okay, questionable, but like half these people are going to play. And, and it's really hard because the reason why I'm holding so many goddamn running backs is because, you know, two days ago, I had seven people on my team with the designation of questionable. And for someone who's just hoping one gets called out to put in my IR so I can then pick up a kicker, that's what I was banking on. Now, the problem that I have is all those questionables all just went away, which yeah. is like, because I found out that like on Wednesday or like for someone to miss a practice, they have to designate them as questionable. And to me, that is like, come on, NFL. I don't think we need to force that. Just say like they're having a rest day. Right. You know? I I think I, I disagree that this seems like there's been a, a lot of injuries this year. I mean, obviously, like your team, I think, has hit, been hit harder. Um, you know, on, on the Niners side, losing Trey is not good. Uh but I do feel the same about just like the use of the questionable tag being like all over the place. Um, because yeah, like if there are, if they sat out at all, they have to be placed as questionable. Um, I do miss the probable tag more and more every year because probable just meant like that. That's what it was. It was like, Hey, um, Deandre Swift sat out of like individual drills in practice, but he did the team walkthrough um for rat like so he's he's we have to put on the injury report but he's probable to play that like you used to see the p and you knew like all right they're in um on the uh, on the opposite side of that i don't think teams are putting their players in like the doubtful category um nearly as much like the doubtful category like the doubtful tag is just not being used like players basically are like oh there's a 90 percent chance they won't play and they're listed as questionable or there's a hundred percent chance they will play and they're listed as questionable so like the ta- like that injury designation like basically doesn't mean anything anymore um, right which makes it harder just to like you know you have to be you now have to go way more in depth to each player to figure out what's going on and then also players aren't getting listed in that they're actually out until 10 minutes before the game. So you have to, you know, if you have life going on and you're not able to put them on the IR because you aren't paying attention in that like 10 minute window, um, it becomes more difficult just to like, you know, manage the team and keep, you know, keep your roster full of active players. So. um, Yeah. And and it's, it's so weird, right? Because like the one thing that if you listen to really any, football podcast right and, and a lot of them are saying this is like the the era of sleepers is pretty much over right because yeah. there's just so much information out there and i wouldn't doubt that every manager in our league for the most part at least either has one resource or multiple right like yeah. i have four that i use as far as just like player reports but the problem is with these questionable tags depending on who their source is the amount of like oh man like uh, a perfect example is Rashad Bateman on Friday for personal reasons, missed his like interviews, the amount of different responses. Some just saying, 
we'll look to Saturday or Sunday to hear more. And then others were like, oh, this is not good. He didn't show up. Like managers should be looking to other receivers. And then it came out that he's, yeah, he just missed it for a personal reason, which is like, I think is generally fair, but yeah. like, okay, well now he's got to sit with the questionable tag. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like looking at my team and my bench is again, like a whole lot of people that I'm like confused about. And I just can't feel confident about putting any of those depth players. And until I know, like all of mine are like factoring so many other things. Like what if Kamara can't play on Sunday? So cool. I need to put Ingram in and Josh Palmer. What if Keenan Allen actually is good to go and is suited up to play? So, well, now I have to take Josh Palmer out. And it's like, I don't know. I'm, I put myself in this situation. So like as manager, I will take full responsibility for the structure of my team. But it, it it is wild, and and I guess I'm just bummed that I felt really good entering week one and week two. It just I don't know. That was just such a poor performance. I'm wondering even how you feel about your week. You know, I sitting in twelfth place, right? Uh, can't feel can't feel great. No, I mean, here's it, the thing with my roster is you know quite three quarterbacks at this point i've i've bet on joe burrow and that hasn't worked um yeah t higgins you know didn't play most of the game um week one uh then last week uh you know james connor goes out for me like after having you know, i mean look look i i picked up tason hill as basically a flyer because uh mike just Gesicki got one target um, and uh, basically pretty much whoever starts at tight end for me, I'm pretty sure it's just not going to do well. Um, but like you look at my roster, it's like Lockett with almost 20, Pollard with almost 20 on the bench, Aaron Rodgers, decent effort, Moster 11. It's like, I've just got a team of like very okay. It's like, I got, I got to do a better job of picking the right players apparently. Um, Cause it's just not yeah. like, everything's just not, rolling like it was for me last year where i made you know consecutively like correct start correct start correct start um really it's just like my my season just uh, in my opinion hinges on like will burrow figure it out and turn it around um, right and and in reality i don't think it's a burrow issue i think it's so much that offensive line is just yeah. this cheap you know like like that that game with dallas like dude he's Wait, is he already over 16 sacks or something this season? Like, come on. It's only week two. Going into week three, he's your franchise quarterback who already has a torn ACL. Now, I would say just to kind of follow up, and and Chris, like, I wouldn't do this for anyone else, but I do think there's one really good tight end who's still out there who was recently dropped, and it – I, I do think would probably perform better than Hill. I, if, um, was a, if it was a recent drop, I might just not know what's what's going on here. Let's, da, 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 da. I would argue that yes, and Joku had an amazing game. It's not him for me. I think Logan Thomas is a great pickup. Um, yeah, it's probably a smarter I, play than Hill. Let's do it. I'm here for you, baby. <laughs> I'm here for you. We do it live. Doing it live. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, the, the reason for grabbing Hill, I mean, look, look, look how many, <laughs> like, Hill, that's, that's wild. Bads and drops is hilarious. Um, and, and the fact that it's not like a low, right. It's not like, oh, a hundred ads, hundred drops. No, there's so many people who are just like, yes, let me add him or yes, let me drop him. It really comes down to like, Hill is an absolute wild card. He's liable to yeah. score points. He's liable to just not touch the ball. Um, and with the te- like the roster I had, like the reason for going with him was like, hey, I need I need a home run somewhere, so might as well like might as well go for it here. Uh, yeah. But then the the other thing too, like MBS, like seven targets last week for for thirteen yards. Like the Chiefs are cooking. He's gonna have a blow up game at some point, and it's probably gonna be when I finally start Jennings over him or something like that. You know. Um, yeah. You know. Same thing with Lockett, like Lockett, big game, you know, 11 targets, but like, I, can you really trust that to happen each week? Like, I don't know. Um, I do, th- I did look at, at, at Thomas before. So thanks for pushing me over the edge. Um, You're welcome. It's uh, I'm here for you. Boo. I, I do. Ju- there's just certain teams I've tried to avoid over the last few years, like the Jets, 
commanders browns but just like it's like yeah they, they never play well so why ha- like players on yeah. teams is kind of always been like a in the back of my mind like that's what you should kind of go for which is why yeah. Burrow at, you know burrow and higgins would have been great um i'm actually really stoked uh you know with, not that connor is not is probably not going to play but just that that gives me an excuse to just start tony pollard like let's see what happens like why not um so yeah, yeah and i i i wonder if I mean, I feel like Jerry is too sold on Zeke, but I I kind of wonder if that would be Dallas is in a weird season. Like, why not maybe potentially try to shop Zeke out there? Like, he's got to be. I think he's in his second or third year of his contract. Okay, cover the guarantee. He's still like good. There's got to be like a team that needs at least a fill in running back and and yeah maybe there's not maybe i'm crazy like I, i'm trying to actually like run through my head and i don't think other than the ravens who are just waiting for jk dobbins to come back like it's I there's think no it, team in my head that like needs a running back honestly the the niners would be a great team to 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 trade for like you know it, no matter how many running backs we have like, and i would not be surprised if we went out and acquired another running back but there's mm-hmm. a team that like likes to load up on skilled players um, but honestly, for Dallas, I just I think it's a matter of like why trade like what what are you going to get back in a trade like why not just like you know run him into the ground see you know see how he does I don't know how long his contract lasts but you know see how long you can just run him and and if you can sign him for cheap at the end of this contract sign him for cheap or if he goes somewhere else he goes somewhere else like I think that's just, true you're not like I, you're not wrong that I think they could be getting more out of that like out of him or more like by trade but I just. I feel like just the mentality is like just just hold on, see what happens. You know, why trade him away and give him extra ammo to like to actually blow up and become like the the stud that he was, you know, uh destined to be, or or at least that that's that's how it all always was uh made out to be that he was gonna be, you know, a perennial top five back. But um but yeah, um yeah, looking at uh, kind of just looking at the the, the standings here, I, I had a question I wanted to ask you with with Travis, Spencer, and Drew all sitting at the top of their respective divisions as the only three teams to, to be two and zero. Where do you see them? Those three teams shaking out? Like, are those the three division champions right, right now? Like, are they the favorites for you for the rest of the season? Um, they are not the highest scoring teams. Um, especially, you know, with Devin getting a, an early loss despite being uh, second, but like it, Travis's team is really good too. Like, are, anyway, point is, is, is there a division leader or are these three division leaders all going to be the champs or do you see someone catching at least one of them, if not more? So I will say just from the, the peeking at all the teams while you're setting me up on that question, is I think all of them have really solid rosters as far as starting rosters. I think there's maybe some concern of depth on some of the teams, but depending on how well they manage by weeks, if, if, if none of them really have a team, like unless they are all set up to like, just have, you know, like they all just happen to have week nine or whatever. And that's their, guaranteed lost like if they can manage their way through bye weeks i think and and avoid major injuries to their studs i think all three of these managers can certainly see themselves sitting in the playoffs yeah i I, i'm comfortable saying that will they end as their division leaders is a little bit harder i do think devin still has a solid team who maybe is just not had a fair shake at some of their matchups. I mean, I do think Kevin is still sitting with a really, really solid team. Yeah. And, and, and I guess we'll find out, you know, he's going up against a, an opponent who's putting up more points now this week, right. With um, Antonio is obviously a manager. That's is someone to be fearful of. I think Spencer, I, I do want to say, I still think if my team comes to form that I can challenge in my division, I think Antonio will challenge in the division. I think Hoyt is off to an unfortunate start already, but I, 
I, I do think he has the potential to hit his stride if he can make moves. Like, he just kind of got unlucky that Dak's injury affects his, like, C.D. Lamb. And, you know, he is rocking with two tight ends, one in his flex, one in his tight end spot. But I, I think Spencer will probably, out of those three, maybe have the hardest chance. But, again, all of them, I just feel like, can they manage their way through buys? Can they avoid injuries? Because their starting lineups are solid. It's just once injuries start to strike, and and look, man, I've been scouring the free agent and and waiver market for the last two weeks now, and it's bare. Like you're not, you're not, and all of us are pretty on top of it. Where you're not going to get that diamond in the rough anymore, or find that person who could be wing, league winner without having to fork up a lot in waivers. And if you lose a stud those are definitely the teams that are going to have the hardest time. Yeah. Um, just to comment on the, it, it, the, the waiver wire being bare and, and we reduced roster size this year. Like there's yeah. like, yeah, you know, like this is, this is why we did it because the waiver wire is still bit like, you know, it was, it was worse last year and la- like, and, and so I'm glad we made that choice because it still is bare. Um, I agree though, that I think Spencer's probably in the, um, I don't want to say worst shape out of the division late leaders, but like is probably the most likely to get overtaken. Um, just because I do think that there's like a lot of competition that's gonna happen in within that division. Uh, but also, but like on the flip side of that, like Travis and Drew have other like elite level rosters in, in Devin and and Kevin, respectively, that like those two teams i think are i mean and just it's a it's a cop out almost with them being you know having scored so many you know kevin has over 300 points over two weeks like somehow doesn't have you know is, is only one and one i think that those team like i i my, my point being i don't think any of the division leaders like should be comfortable with with a lead in the division like by any means like i think they're all going to compete for playoff spots but like there's no way that you could just say like, oh yeah, like they're the best team in the division, like quite clearly, like they're they're, they're in first place. Yeah, do like um, and you know going into the season, like I would have thought like Devin would have had a better roster than than Travis. I would have thought Kevin would have a better roster than Drew. Um, and I think that in your division, in that division, I think maybe was the only one that was a little bit muddled. Like as far as like I don't know if there's one roster that stands out as the best. So yeah, yeah. I mean, just I guess my point being like. We're two. We're we're starting week three, and I'm I'm just very excited that there's a, a lot of chaos left to happen. Um, yeah, in this season for us. Yeah, and I think just to point out, like I think, just to look at the points for right. Like yes, two weeks is maybe not the biggest sample size, but it is enough to know what a team could do, right? I mean, two weeks is was that one eighth of the season that we're gonna have. Like, like it's not insignificant amount of um a, a portion of the league or of the season but Travis is sitting on top of a group that the top 3 have more points than three other teams in each of the divisions right so like like it, even looking at the slow brew league okay Hernandez the or Spencer has literally three points more than game uh than Hunter in the grad and then otherwise had hunter scored three more points would be that league would have three teams better than all of slow brew and i and and i would consider our division to be definitely the most parody or at least Mm -hmm. generally the most equal now so obviously again this is not hating on hoyt he's off to a much slower start maybe just maybe he's gonna have the reverse luck right like he started three and oh four and oh but this year he's gonna go oh and four, but then he's just gonna sail to the finals. When, when, yeah, <laughs> with but, the row after that. <laughs> yeah, the other. So that's why I think the grad might feel similar to last season's slow brew, where last season it just seemed like our division was just constantly battling each other to try to make it to playoffs. The grad kind of gives me that vibe this year, and then you know spikes. I think you're right. Like seeing that Kevin has six 
you know, nearly 60 more points than Drew. Uh, and it just happens to go against the matchups. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I think it's going to be interesting. I do think all three of those teams have a really good shot for playoffs. Um, yeah. And honestly, we we will likely see them in playoffs. Right. But I just don't know if they'll end as the division leader. Yeah. No, I mean, that's that's, that's essentially what I was trying to get at is, like, it, it feels – um, it feels early. It feels early, but it's exciting. It's exciting because you know we could be also you know we could be proven wrong. Like uh, all of a sudden, if uh, you know who does Drew play this week? Uh, he's playing. Oh, you, you, he's playing you. Duh. You know, and uh, and Kevin's got. Well, that Kevin is sitting there playing against Antonio, which I think is actually uh, probably one of the better matchups this week, uh, especially with you know. Uh, I think Antonio ended up getting a pretty good game out of um, is he the uh, yeah Deontay Johnson who was playing pretty well for the Steelers who I would assume are going to eventually come to their own like the fact that he got 16 points out of Deontay was yeah eight catches guess, is a lot like he, he had a lot of targets um, took a lot away from the Muth where I had uh, oh. I had Fire Muth going in two leagues and and I was playing against Johnson in two leagues and it was, Thursday was rough um but yeah i think this is this is probably the most pivotal matchup um of the league so far i mean kevin projected for 135 is, is a ton and a lot of that has to do with with josh allen uh jalen waddle honestly feels like under projected at this point at 17 i actually think i think he's over projected for just obviously miami's comeback was insane and incredible i do think that it is bolstered by that just being like okay they played new england who maybe just isn't as good as we thought baltimore they had a huge blow up i mean 11 receptions 19 he's not gonna get targets again but he isn't also gonna only get five that's like but that's why i think 17 is probably pretty fair i do i would say that you know even if you want to make like a little side bet here for no money for just pride you know, over under his projection, you're saying over, I'll say under. Yeah, I'll say over. Yeah. Um, okay. It's a little fun, yeah, a little, little fun, fun bet in the middle little, of this. A little funsies. Uh, but yeah, the super important. I mean, both of these teams, like, you know, Antonio did not have a, a first round pick yet still. He's like right there competing for a playoff spot um, where Kevin had huge expectations. Like there's a, um, yeah, this is this is probably one of the most pivotal matchups of the week, if not the most pivotal matchup. So super excited to see it. Maybe and maybe it does kind of pivot on on how. I do you want to correct you? I think he did have a first round pick. He has Dalvin Cook. I would assume that. I thought he had. Um... No, because I'm looking. He's got Dalvin Cook, who was a first rounder, unless he made a trade that I'm unaware of. But I think to your point, you want to know the one thing is I oh, think sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, he has Kyle... no second or third. Yes, if Kyle Pitts hits. Finally, like, right, like Atlanta right. just kind of figures out that let's not waste this, you know, one in a lifetime talent at tight end right now. We should be very afraid of Kevin hitting his full potential. Oh, yeah. And uh, and who knows? Because, like, even, you know, you're even sitting there with Jonathan Taylor, uh, likely underperforming yeah, to so. his expectation. And that is frightening. Um. And and maybe it was just last week against Jacksonville, who I think has turned out to be a really good team. But man, like if Ke- Kevin can only be targeting a first week by, otherwise anything is a disappointment. And hopefully, you know, he's able to. Well, hopefully not. Right? Obviously, I want to win the title, but like, you know, hopefully he does <laughs> achieve it because this is definitely the team that should be. I mean, look at every one of those players on his starting roster is just like in 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 even you know we've given Christian Kirk some hard times in the past but god for for the Jags he's incredible and I, I think that yeah. being a number one has been great for him right yeah. if six is his lowest number of targets and and you know boy wonder is is the quarterback of the future for the Jags I mean that's gonna be a pairing it's gonna be great and then yeah look look at his like depth sitting with Robinson, who's been great for the Jags coming out. Ayuk is talented. Hopkins comes back in a you know six weeks or something. Like 
Curtis Samuel. Okay, maybe it falls off. Yeah, yeah, he like. Honestly, what's great is Kevin could potentially not only have just a killer team right now, but if he really wanted to make a few moves to move some picks up oh, yeah. earlier and set himself up for next year, obviously making trades that are like not going to hurt him per se, man, like Kevin is set up for an incredible year and potentially an incredible future season too. If, if, if he decides to make moves, you know? Yeah. I could see Kevin. Kevin likes a good trade. He there's a lot of potential like two for one type of trades he could make, right? Like um getting an elite player for like Robinson and Ayuk, you know, like or getting an elite player for Samuel and Spiller, that type of like that type of stuff. Like he could potentially not even have to trade away picks and still just like make this roster better. Like I don't know who why he would need to get like to get a better receiver with Adams and Waddle, like just the, with the way he started out, he's got uh, Hopkins and Ayuk is a back backup right. too. Like, I, I mean, I would even say right now, Chris, like if, if, if Kevin came to you with Ayuk and Robinson for like going up to your team or trying to get up to your team here and like, was like, Hey, I mean, would you take Robinson and Ayuk for Swift? Probably, yeah. I mean, I I, I need – like, I, the only problem for me is this, like, I don't have a ton of depth at running back. Like, a lot of it is just, like, the, you know, Mostert, Madison. Con- Connor is, is uh, hopefully going to be healthy. Um, but, yeah, like, that's – like, it kind of fits into my team of, like, budget – like, it's a ragtag group of misfits, and we're just hoping that everyone pops off at the same time. Like, something like that is, is – Absolutely. Or even Christian Kirk, right? Someone who's off to like an incredible start. Christian Kirk and Robinson, and, and maybe people don't want to package two Jacksonville Jaguars, but even if you were to offer something like that for like, again, and I made that offer to you for Swift. So if you did it for any starting pair, and most of us in the league have maybe one or two question marks, or like maybe our flex is our like most questionable spot, and you could put Kirk or Robinson in your flex, like, I think anyone's going to take that. And for Kevin to potentially then bolster up, like, just ta- like true, true talent, right? Like, where it's like, okay, you can play the week. Or when you get to a bye week for one of your studs, you know that you're setting in another top-tier player. Like, kind of wild. Again, Kevin, if you do listen to these and, and maybe you have a better idea, Chris, I'm not giving you ideas, but, like, I don't know. I could even be open to making a move yeah. for like players like Kamara. I'd even honestly, even knowing that I have really great keeper value for Fournette still, I'd even consider something in that realm for Fournette. I don't know if it would be Ayuk and, and Robinson, but like if you paired two like lower players in Fournette and knowing that Fournette is like the only player on Tampa Bay right now. Um, Jeez. Like it, it was just an example, but I think that could be a trade that is made. Yeah, I uh, and anyone would take. Yeah, I think that there's there's so like I think the main thing to look at with Kevin's roster is he's set up with a lot of depth, which is great for him. But that also just means there's so many good players that like aren't playing, right? Mm-hmm. So does he look at try to trade some of them away to get again get like a more elite option, or is he just happy with the depth and happy that those you know, you trade away Ayuk, Curtis Samuel, they can't beat you later or when they're on your bench, but they could if you trade them away. So that's the only question. That's true. Like that's, you know, like it's, it doesn't hurt. It, it, it's the same idea as like, you know, have you ever like, oh, like you've got like, you know, a kicker is going down on Sunday night or Monday night and like, they're going to bring in the backup. And like, even though you don't have, like you played your kicker already, like your opponent now needs a kicker. So you add him. You're like, yeah, you had, the, you had the backup because, like, why not? Like, now I win. Like, same idea, just in a bigger form. Like, keep all the best players because yeah. they can't beat you. Or does Kevin go, like, you know, does he try to trade to get more, um, just you know, again, get more elite? Hopkins comes back in what six weeks now? Um, yeah, I think something like that. Four oh, weeks. It looks no, like six weeks total. Four, like, so he's only going to get better. Um, yeah, it's, it's frightening. This is your league to win, Kevin. Don't mess it up. <laughs> but that's why we got to root for the underdogs here. We need exactly. these, we need these guys to take down the king. 
<laughs> well, hey, uh, we're just about out of time. Um, as as always, we like to do some some bold predictions. I I, I have one. Um, if you're ready, Nabil, um, go ahead. But if if you need some time to think, I, I've got I've got a bold prediction for you. I think you'll love. Oh God, what if it's the same in my head? Why don't you start? I highly doubt it's the same in your head. Uh, last week, I incorrectly <laughs> predicted the the demise okay. of the Buffalo Bills, um, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do it again. We're gonna do it again. Oh Lord! But, but here's the here's the reasoning behind it. Uh, yesterday on my drive home from Atascadero after I I ref some JV football, coming down the grade back into San Luis Obispo. I was and coming up, going across from me, I saw the Wiener Mobile. That's right, the Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile was traveling oh, no. through San Luis Obispo County. Oh, no. Everyone knows who the backup quarterback is for the Indianapolis Colts. It's Nick Foles. It's a sign. Big Wieners are going to be in. Colts beat the Bills. Interesting. Interesting. So wait, all of this is just because Foles is behind Ryan. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's not gonna play, but but there's just okay. a lot of big wiener energy going on right now. It's a sign. Uh, is it that bold? I mean, the Colts were were like predicted the Colts to got be a shut out by Jacksonville. The Colts. Okay, stopped. I'll give it to you just literally based on two weeks of performance. But like honestly, this was a team that was projected to like even challenge Buffalo. It's bold though. It's bold based on the last two weeks. I'll give you that. It's, they and, missed the playoffs last year because they couldn't uh, couldn't seal the deal in the last week of the season. Like they're not good. Jonathan Taylor makes them look like a good team. Yeah, I, you know, honestly, for like two seconds, like I have to talk about like what happened to Matt Ryan. Like, and 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 it's part of me is thinking like, God, maybe this has to be the offensive coordinators cannot come up with a scheme that fits the quarterbacks that they keep getting. Like, there's no way. Like, I don't know. I, I mean, Ryan was not terrible. Like, the reason why, like, he underperformed at least in Atlanta, and it could be that he's less familiar with his team now, right, than he was back then, and so he knew where to be in or where to be at. But, like, come on. Like, he he, he was pretty accurate, and this is a better line. And it just feels like with him, Wentz, Phillip Rivers, they just, like, never fully – and, look, Rivers was – towards the end of his career and maybe Ryan is too and like Wentz has his moments but like it just seems like something about the game plan is just they almost feel like they force the ball to their studs too much where it does not allow for any flexibility and I know I'm saying that about, about a quarterback who also had to force the ball to Julio Jones right but like they I don't know I feel like something's off with their game plan I have my bold prediction to wrap this up and I Let's think I think you're gonna be a little amazed by this because I thought you were going to maybe go somewhere around this route. I, I have a feeling. Here I we go. Going, but hey, go ahead. So we all know that I am a huge fan of Jimmy Garoppolo. Not only am I going to project that there's going to be uh, the point total will be over 50 points. I don't know. I don't know the Vegas spreads, but I'm going to say it's going to be over 50. I think it's going to be an, an, a great, intense offensive game. Everyone's going to be puffing out their chest trying to prove why they had all the hype coming in. Jimmy G will throw at least three touchdowns to prove that he should be playing. The Niners will end with a win. And George Kittle on his return with his best bud will score two touchdowns. And a triumphant return of don't fuck with the Niners. Love We're going to... Yeah, Love it. I'm going to put that much faith, that bold. I actually do feel pretty good about it. I feel uh, Kittle's coming back from an injury, hopefully fully rested. Jimmy G has that connection with him. Kittle has all this like, ah, oh, maybe he's washed. Jimmy G feels that way. They're going to come in here saying, hey, do you remember us? Because we're back. It's going to be awesome. Over 50, three touchdowns from uh, Jimmy John. Over 50 point total. Jimmy Jimmy, did I say Jimmy Johnson? Jimmy Garoppolo, three touchdowns, Kittle two. Stamp it. It's going to happen. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, I will only add two things. 
The uh, Vegas total is 44. So Nabil's projected a full touchdown over the Vegas total. Uh, and I'll just leave us with this. Kyle Shanahan without Jimmy Garoppolo as his starting quarterback, 8-27. and 27. Kyle Shanahan with Jimmy Garoppolo as his starting quarterback, 31-14. and 14. Love it. Love it, Nabil. I think he needs a game manager, man. <laughs> uh, that is all the time we had. Thanks for listening, everybody. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Woo! Peace!